Girl, get at it, get your bag up. Hit that gym and get back fine. Go get that degree, go girl, focus on me. Unlock potential that, that you didn't know you had in you. Oh, yeah, it's time to mix it up and get. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shardell Baker and I am the woman behind the postgrad diaries of Curly Blanco. For those of you that are new to my channel, welcome. And for those of you that are returning, welcome back. Today in this video, I'm going to be giving five tips on what I believe will help you to have a successful college semester, especially for my freshmen and for those of you looking to go to HBCU. So without further ado, let's get started. The first piece of advice that I have for you all is to number one, be open to change. And I know this may sound very cliche when it comes to trying to just transition through different walks of life, you know, as far as being open and receptive to everything, but it really is true. Um, again, for those of you that are just starting college, you're around all new people, you know, you're not around your parents anymore. You're really just trying to figure out who you are as a new person in this new season. So I would highly encourage you to forget everything that you just learned in middle school and high school and in your hometown and really just open yourself up to new possibilities. You know, you never want to block your blessings and you never want to um, be too close off to new possibilities, possibilities that could really help you to grow. Number two, the second piece of advice that I would give is to get involved. How are you really gonna learn your college campus if you don't know what's going on? So that means reading your emails, asking around, being receptive, again, as I just mentioned in tip one, to be open. Um, I know some people are not that social, so they don't always wanna be on the scene, but if nothing else, really be open to finding what's going to help you um, find your crowd. So let's just say you're not that social and you really um, are just all into your studies, all into your books. They have different organizations on various campuses, not just at HBCUs, to where you can find um, your clique or as far as people that are just strictly in your major to be able to hang out with and go to events with and even like find different opportunities to be able to go to events together, um, do projects together, things like that. So I would definitely highly recommend that for those that aren't that social. Um, you don't always have to go to a party. You don't always have to be in the limelight. It's really just about finding what's going to work for you. Um, I will say specifically with HBCU culture, it's can sometimes get repetitive, which I'll talk about later on in another um, piece of advice I have, but just try to really be able to do what's at your capacity to make you feel involved in school and college life. Um, I've talked to numerous people that weren't and they low-key kind of regret it. Uh, now given if your school is like toxic and you just know that's not for you, it's not for you. But if you genuinely have a really strong culture at your school and you feel like, you know, you want to go to the games, you want to be able to, um, you know, go to maybe, um, i talking about what's another HBCU event. Um, like at Hampton, for example, we have 12 to 2, which isn't so much 12 to 2 anymore, but that's another video. Um, but let's just say we have 12 to 2 is our... Um, day party that we always have on campus like if you want to you know go to 12 to 2 see what the vibes are um listen to some music with the dj um maybe um if your school has certain like uh cafes or restaurants nearby like just finding different ways to still be involved without um going above your boundaries so that's number two number three which is personally my favorite tip is to find your unique style and this is specifically for those that go to HBCUs because as you probably know, or maybe you will learn, is that HBCU culture is very big in fashion. So the drip is always gonna be for sale. <laughs> you have to make sure that you are, um, you know, covered from head to toe. Um, this doesn't mean to break your budget or break your bank and try to ask your parents for money all the time, even though some people do. But you know, it's about, <laughs> it's about making sure that you are wearing what makes you feel comfortable, what makes you feel confident, and something that you really want to um, go out and present your campus with, present the world with. Um, I know a lot of times uh, in HBCU culture, I've been seeing a lot more lately that it's an oversaturation of certain styles. That's why I said find your style. Like your friend style may not be your style. Your roommate style may not be your style. You may take inspiration, but definitely make sure that you're doing things that are going to make you feel comfortable, um, both outwardly and internally, um, which I'll talk about again a little bit later in the video. But yeah, um, it may help if you go on Pinterest to find outfit ideas. I know there's so many outfit um, and get ready with me on TikTok. TikTok, YouTube, for example. Um, it's just so many resources where you can really find different things that you like and things that will really make you feel confident. So definitely don't put your inspiration too heavily off of other people. You wanna make sure that you're doing and making the best decisions that are for you, even beyond fashion. Coming to you guys at number four, the next tip is to pace yourself. 
And I'm gonna say that one more time. Y'all know I have to repeat things for y'all to get it. Pace yourself. And I get it because I'm a natural like planner. I have to make sure everything is mapped out from A to Z. Nothing can be out of place. And I understand the pressure it feels to have everything together, but genuinely, you really don't have to have it all together. Um, as you start getting deeper into your years of college, it will be more of a mandate to have things together. But definitely don't stress yourself out trying to make sure that you have everything like pinpointed. The best thing I can recommend is to have a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. Only because you never know what may go wrong. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket and only have one plan situated. And then if all the eggs break, you're, you know, that's it. <laughs> um, and especially with college, you know, everything is just so sacred and you really, really, really don't get that time back. I know you guys probably have already heard that, but you really don't get that time back. Um, it's four years, it goes by fast, especially for those of you that maybe want to study abroad or you want to um, graduate early. Like it really goes by quick and you don't get that time back. Um, you're actually an adult longer than what you are a child. So soak in that time, make those memories, um, but don't lose sight of what's important, which, which is first of all, your education, um, make sure that you're making meaningful connections. And last, but certainly not least, we have tip number five, which is to block out negativity. I say this because sometimes, as you all can probably assume, in college things can get extremely stressful. You don't always know what's going on. You're away by yourself most of the time, and it can just be hard to balance out your new life and your new friends and things that you're involved in. So I highly would recommend getting a planner, trying to map out your days more, and really finding out when the time is best for you to have self-care. This can be maybe going to the beach if you have a beach by your school. Shout out to Hampton. This could also be going to get your nails done or going uh, to read a book or going to the movies. And sometimes self-care does not always have to be with other people. Um, I know for me personally, sometimes I would get kind of tired and burnt out of being around my friends all the time and also having classes with them. So if that means going for, you know, by yourself on a walk or something around campus, like do what's going to help you to feel fulfilled and just to have that balance and that saw after a long day of classes or just taking an exam or just trying to decompress from everything that's going on. The bottom line is you want to make sure that you're in college to have fun, but also get your education. So that means trying to find the balance between doing both. And this is no easy task. It doesn't, it won't more than likely be completed in your first year, maybe even your second year. It takes time to really build a routine and build a pattern, especially as your classes changes. And as you get deeper into your college career, things are going to continually increase, but it's up to you to make this the best or the worst four years of your life. And I say that with a grain of salt because somebody might be in the comments and saying, oh, like that's a monolith or whatever, but it's really true. Um, it goes back into your energy and also the energy around you as far as it's going to help you have a great college experience. And if nothing else, you're getting a degree out of it at the end and that's even better because then you can go on to your next chapter where I'm at, which is post-grad. So if you like this video, make sure you comment in the comments below what your favorite tip was, share this with a friend who might need it, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. No.